Hello there, you 451 wonderful subscribers. My name is Anthony Larkin. Here, you'll find me exploring near-death experiences from individuals who say they have died, travelled to the other side, and then returned. If you are new here, well, thank you for joining. I do hope you enjoyed today's narration. It was September the 3rd, 1990 at 3.15am. Coming back from Quebec City, my friend was driving my car. Without warning, she lost control of the vehicle and we ended up in a head-on collision with another car. At that moment, I was projected straight out of my body and I was looking at my friend and my own body inside the car. Both of us were not moving, and I appeared to be dead. I remember wanting to tell my parents straight away about the accident, and I wanted to say goodbye immediately. As soon as I thought this, I was right in front of them, but they couldn't hear me. Upon realising that there was no interaction with my parents, I decided to let myself go. In my case, there wasn't any tunnel that I remember from reading previous near-death experience stories. I was even waiting for a tunnel, but none came. I went, instead, into a dark place with nothing around me. I wasn't scared. It was really peaceful there. And then the most extraordinary thing happened. I began experiencing my entire life. It was projected on a screen from my babyhood right up to adult life. It was so real. I was looking at myself, but this was better than any 3D movie, as I was also able to sense the feelings of the people that I'd interacted with, or I could feel the good and the bad emotions that I made them go through. At the end of the film, everything went black for a while, almost like in a real movie before they turn on the light. I then understood through this knowledge that I did deserve a place in what we call heaven, without even knowing what it would be like or what heaven is. But I felt this wonderful feeling of peace, which became stronger and stronger. In the darkness, I began to see a light in the distance ahead of me. I was attracted to it, but I remember thinking that I could also go away from it, or even go back to it if I wanted to. No way, I said to myself. I decided to go closer to it, and that feeling of great peace became so strong, so good, it was unimaginable. It looked like a cone of light. I heard the words peace, joy, happiness, love, eternity. And while I was what felt like in orbit around this great, huge cone of light, I remember that those five words as a whole, they became the only important thing in the universe for me and I tried to get rid of everything else in order to enter the light. Soon the feeling of peace was replaced with a feeling of love. I remembered that something was preventing me from entering the light and at that moment, after having analysed it, I realised that it was the grudges I kept towards a few people. I had to forgive them in order to purify myself from all negative thought I could have had toward them. After forgiveness then came the permission. The permission to enter the light. I could almost touch it. I wanted to enter it but I was holding back in order to see more details before I actually entered the light. I remember also that I was at the bottom of the light cone. And after a certain time, I just let myself go. And bang. Just like that, it was an explosion of love. The feeling I had before getting into the light was great. But it was still a feeling I could explain with human words. But once inside, there were no words that I could explain this feeling. Except that I thought I would die because these feelings of love were so strong. I was amazed I could still think like I did on earth and at that point I started to laugh as I thought, how can I die? I am already dead. 
So bring on all the love you can, I said. The sensation of great love grew even stronger and I noticed there were different levels in the light. I also noticed at that point that I had complete knowledge of the universe. It was all available to me. I simply had to ask to know. How great, I thought. My first question, is there life elsewhere? I guess you know the answer to that if you don't. It's a big yes. My second question, are there many planets that have more superior life forms than we have on Earth? The answer that came back were there are thousands of planets having a higher evolution than you know on Earth. My third question was, are there many planets with a lower evolution than Earth? And the answer was yes, thousands too. My fourth question, can I see what it looks like on a planet with a higher evolution? Yes, came the answer. Here you are, and in an instant, I was there on another planet. I was able to see my body there. I was in the presence of people and I was able to talk to them. How great, I thought. They were amazed to see me in front of them too. I was in some sort of a city with flat ground. There were buildings with no windows, no doors, just like big boxes. They had a special way to enter them, but it wasn't very important for me to know. We weren't communicating with voice but through our minds, like telepathic. I was able to understand each word, and while I was talking, I know I was using another language with them. This was all done automatically. They asked me where did I come from. They wanted to see in my mind the stars that I could see from my planet. The result was good. They were also asking me where on earth I was born. What was the area I liked to see, and what I liked to do on earth? I told them telepathically that I was born in a village called Kaplan and that I liked to scuba dive. They asked me where I was taking the energy to survive. I knew right away that they were talking about food in a strange way. I told them about the plants that we eat on earth and then they said, are you also eating what used to be alive? I said yes. They told me we knew there were primitive civilizations but not as bad as that. They were really surprised that someone coming from such a primitive world could meet them on their own planet. I asked the one that kind of looked in charge or was representing the group, where do you take your energy here to survive? They said, we take it from the cosmic power, as you do, but directly, instead of going through natural interfaces, as you do. I also asked, do you sometimes travel to other worlds? The same person said, yes, we do, and they showed me a spaceship, almost like an aeroplane, but with no wings. I asked him what kind of energy he was using to travel so far. He said, we use a gravity generator, which gets us almost unlimited speed. I talked about the problems we had on Earth with great acceleration due to the gravity forces involved. He said that their gravity generator affects the entire spaceship, including people on board, so there's no gravity force at all affecting passengers or crew. The beings looked shorter than us and walked slowly compared to us. They didn't have any hair. They had a strange uniform which moulded onto their skin as if it was part of them. It was hard to tell where it began and where it ended. They told me we might get to see your planet sometime in the near future, but it is very far from here. I said, no problem, but be careful. I said goodbye and thanked them for the information. Returning to the knowledge level of light, I then asked, can I see less evolved planets? Yes, here you are. And then I was there. I was in front of some primitive cavemen. Their bodies was full of hair. They were chasing strange animals, big ones. I tried to communicate with them, but I had no results. They couldn't see me nor hear me. It wasn't too interesting there, so I decided to quickly go back to the light. I was then told by the light that I wasn't allowed to interfere with the primitive world as they must go through their own evolution by themselves, just as we are doing. I thought about asking some questions regarding Earth. 
I asked, when will human life end? Calculating in human years. The answer was 3587. I asked what would happen, and the voice said, see for yourself. I saw something big, real big, like a comet or an asteroid coming towards the planet. Humans were still on Earth at this time. There was total panic on Earth. Because of the conflicts with different countries and less investment in space research and NASA, no one could see something happening and approaching Earth. Towards the end of the Earth, all nations stop all of their conflicts and the entire world tries to work together instead of fighting each other. People will realize the stupidity of war and will work together for many years there will finally be peace on Earth before the planet ends. Getting back to more positive things, I went to a higher level into the light. So wonderful, so much love. This is higher than the level of knowledge. It was the level of creation. Everything becomes possible here. Creating physical things and sharing the creation level with God. It's hard to believe but that is exactly what it felt like. I didn't want to go back to Earth, but at the same time, I wanted to share this knowledge. I had underestimated the infinite power of the light, and in that instant, without even knowing, I had formulated a wish that I'd like to return to Earth in order to share this knowledge with as many people as possible. What I didn't know was that a wish formulated at this level in this light becomes a reality. Upon formulating this wish, I saw myself pulled toward the bottom of the light cone and I slowly found myself outside of it. I suddenly realized I could see my body once more. It's then that I saw my friend. She was coming toward me in the light behind me. She was dressed completely in white, like a bride, not walking but as though she was floating. I had the impression that I was on my friend's path as she was slowly moving toward me. I was going to bump into her so I raised my arms to prevent this and she did the same and as we did, our hands touched and I was astonished at the flashes and sparks of light emanating from them. She explained to me that she would be staying in the light and that her time on earth was over. She knew that I, however, was returning to earth and that I would never forget this experience as it was so much better than what we had known physically. The feelings of love were growing weaker and weaker and I could now see the wider scope of everything on earth. Wars, greed, anger, racism. As I was getting closer and closer, I was very much saddened by it all. Suddenly, I was back in the car, flames leaping all around. I turned and saw my friend's body and knew beyond doubt that she no longer inhabited it. The light gave me just enough time to exit the vehicle before the flames would reach me. This was Roger C's near-death experience. You can read the full narrative on the Near-Death Experience Research Foundation website. Link in the description below. Well, that's it from me right now. Anthony Larkin is signing off once again. I'll take this opportunity to thank you for watching and I do hope I'll see you again on the next video. God bless.